Hey, good afternoon, our dear viewers of Civic Space TV. Welcome to the Youth Roundtable. We want to welcome you back from the lockdown and ask you that the lockdown was lifted out of necessity. So it does not mean we are done with Corona. Please wear your masks. I'm not wearing mine because the distance is healthy. Sanitize as much as you can and follow all the standard operating procedures that the Minister of Health has handed over to us. The Youth Roundtable is here again, and today we flash a light on the National Youth Council. In 1993, the National Resistance Council felt that it was important to create an affirmative structure to support the youth. It is known that in many African cultures, youth, women, always lagged behind in leadership, in economic affairs, for different social political issues. With the coming of the NRM government, or NRA if you like, there was need to create platforms that give a priority to youth, to women, to workers, and other special interest groups for them to organize, for them to fight and advocate for their issues, for them to have a common voice, for them to, to be productive and useful in the social economic transformation of their country. Today, the National Youth Council Statute has undergone several amendments to make it better and to answer the questions of the time. And as we speak now, the structure is in place with the leadership from the village through the parish, sub-county, district, and the national level. And every year, around this time in August, the National Youth Council meeting usually happens. Have you heard about it? Is it something strange? Today, we have people who are in the mix of this National Youth Council, and they're going to do an assessment for us on the history of this body, on the relevance of this body, on the usefulness of the body in the current times. And the fly on the wall, the civic space fly, has found that there are some contentions going on within the structure on whether or not to have the council in the midst of the pandemic. Some think, yes, why not? This country is a young country. The youth are the majority. Most of our problems root from the youth. So it's important that such a council happens. It cannot be postponed. And if members of parliament are meeting, we are told there are over 500. Why not for the youth leaders? There are also those who say, yes, council is relevant in all those ways, but maybe not at this time. Maybe later. Maybe using other methods. Now, to break down this topic for us, I have a very uh, rich and diverse panel. I think I'm going to start from my extreme end. Asasira Rachel is the Uganda National Students Affairs Uganda National Students Association, rather, UNSA representative to the National Youth Council. Rachel, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Asasla Rachel, an UNSA delegate to NYC and the Assistant General Secretary of Uganda National Students Association. I'm happy to be here. Yes, and uh, right next to her is Kawabito Shamim, <laughs> the Secretary of Female Affairs, Bunyangabo. Uh, Shamim, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Council. Uh, I would also say it's a pleasure to be here. As Council has said, I am Kawabito Shamim. I am the Female uh, Youth Affairs Winyangabu District. And I also represent uh, students, institutions, to the National Council for Higher Education. Thank you so much. Okay, it's a pleasure having you. And just next to her there <laughs> is Comrade Kidega. Kidega Moses is the Secretary of Labor Affairs, National Youth Council, and a man of so many hearts. I know that he's in the Council of Guru. I know that he has served as Secretary of National uh, Affairs, we call it, uh, of UNSA. Kidega, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, thank you, my comrade. And um, I'm humbled by the invitation, and I'm humbled to be here. Like you've said, my name is Kidega Moses. I represent the youth of Gulu District. In the National Youth Council, I also double as the Labor Affairs Secretary of the same institution. Thank you. Yes, and finally, but by no means uh, least, Ninsima Helen, <laughs> Secretary of Female Affairs, Iba and that district. Good to have you. Thank you, Council. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Such civic spaces are really, really important. My name is Ninsima Helen. As introduced, the Secretary of Female Affairs, Uganda District. I also double as the Vice President, Uganda National Students Association. 
But I, I wouldn't be happy if I don't introduce myself as a former Vice Guild President Tambogo <laughs> University. Of Tambogo. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I am yes. proud of my alma mater, regardless of what Makere is saying. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. So as, as you can tell, powerful people, powerful positions. And today, we, we are going to learn. So I'll start with you, Shamim. What is this animal called the National Youth Council? Someone watching us may be wondering, what, what is National Youth Council? Uh, thank you so much, Council. Uh, National Youth Council is a big body. For those who don't know National Youth Council, our structures uh, start from uh, the village level up to the district level. Um, it has youth, and um, me, as me, I believe National Youth Council is a body, uh, is a body for the young people, and. Uh, it runs from village level to, to the district level to national. Uh, it was constituted years back, that was 1993. And uh, me, I believe uh, National Youth Council is a, bo is a body, it's, it's a grooming body for the uh, young leaders and also future leaders of our Uganda. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, thank you. Kidega. What is this National Youth Council? I think I need to pick it from each one of you such that we, we, we understand it. What is the National Youth Council? Um, thank you once again. I have mentioned before that Uganda has one of the most progressive constitutions, at least in the sub-Saharan Africa. And this constitution in chapter um, 319 um, enacts the National Youth Council by the National Youth Council Act. Now. This is the part of the Ugandan constitution from which we derive the mandate of the National Youth Council. So from a legal perspective, that is what the National Youth Council is. It's an act of parliament. But um, its roles go as far as uh, being stipulated in the same act as being um, the first objective is to unite the young people of this country. The second objective is to organize these young people and encourage them to participate in productive um, affairs of this country. And then the third and most important is the, to protect the young people from any form of manipulation. So that is the legal perspective. But there is the other perspective that could be seen as the moral and the ethical, which is does this very good um, act translate into what we see on ground? Does the goodwill of these very good articles eventually translate to what we see on the ground? Are young people being protected from manipulation? Are they being united under one body? Are they being uh, organized to participate in social economic production of this country? What is our contribution to the GDP? I think those are the discussions that I think are fundamental and we, we must have and to engage further later. Thank you very much, Moses. You have actually preempted some of the questions I've prepared for you, but you will not survive them, <laughs> nevertheless. Asa Asira, you represent the Uganda National Students Association in NYC, and there I can tell you that there are so many students who follow this show religiously. What does this body, the National Youth Council, mean to a student? Thank you so much, Council. To the students, I think National Youth Council is a body that is supposed to bring them together. Since they are students, they also fall under youth. So as National Youth Council, National Youth Council is meant to bring together the youth and involve them Developmental activities so that they can be represented. And I think as students, we also need that representation as, and following that. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, and now to you, Helen. <laughs> so you are the Secretary of Female Affairs, even under district. Yes. Does that mean that every district has a Secretary of Female Affairs? Does you know, could you break this down for us? How, how did you become the Secretary of Female Affairs? There, there may be young people out there in Ibanda who would have wanted to take that position. And since you have held big positions in Tambogo and where, how did you get there? How, how, how is this body organized? Yeah, so the National Youth Council has structures right from the village level, parish level, sub-county level, district level. And of course, the national... When you say structures, what do you mean? What is there? Yes, uh, 
I'm breaking it down mm -hmm. uh, up to the national level. Yes. Now, you we have nine representatives or what we call a, a part. We would have like a village council or yes. a, an executive committee. And who is the member of the village council? The the nine nine delegates who are voted by the. What do you mean? What are the members? Okay, like the the youth of the village. Mm come together, mm. vote an executive to represent them on the youth executive committee of the village. Yes. These nine mm. will then come up to vote the, the ones to the parish. Okay. Then the ones of the parish come up to vote the ones of the sub-county. Mm. And then three, three of the sub-county delegates, yeah. this is the female affairs of the sub-county, mm. the chairperson of the sub-county and the finance. Okay. These will vote the, 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 the district executive committee. Yes. And these also are nine, mm. and I am the female affairs of Ibanda district. Mm. She's the female affairs of Bunyangavu, and then he's the, fem the secretary of finance mm. for Gulu. Mm. Now that means we have three, three to make up all the 431 delegates. Are they about? Yeah, mm -hmm. about 431 of the National Youth Council. Okay. Yeah, so being the female affairs of Ibanda district, it means that we have female affairs in all the districts that make up our country. So is everyone free to go and contest to become female affairs, for example, at the district? Is every youth... No, uh, no, no. no. You're like I said, you're supposed to be among the three delegates of the sub-county. Mm. For you to be... You're, and, of course, you're supposed to be a female mm -hmm. to, to contest for female affairs of the district. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll start with you, Moses. You sit on the national executive right at the apex uh, of this structure. And you ably highlighted for us the objectives for which this body was established. And you hinted uh, that it's one thing for the objectives to be set out in the Act, and it's another for them to be uh, implemented. So that right there is where my question is. Has the National Youth Council lived to its expectations? You, you could use, you could highlight some examples of, since 1993, up to date, uh, those are very many years coming to 30 years. What has the NYC achieved? What, what has it done? What does it do? What do you people do? Um, thank you, Council, once again. I have mentioned before that um, I have read a book by a very famous Ugandan politician who argued that um, the enactment of these affirmative action institutions, the National Youth Council, the National Women Council, and all these affirmative uh, political positions were a top-bottom approach, which to me um, was the biggest point from which we lost um, the cause and lost direction of these affirmative actions and um, how best they can realize the objectives. There was no necessity, in, and this is in my opinion, there was no necessity that was urgent at the time of the enactment of the National Youth Council. The youth at the time of 1993 did not go up in arms and demand government to institute the National Youth Council. So it was a given by the government to the young people. And to me, that has led to complacency in the institution. It has led to, um, it has only deeply rooted the patronage system. And even when the leaders of these institutions deep down would love to make um, impact or cause a difference in the leadership, of this country, the circumstances around uh, the institution might not really give them the leeway and the space to practice or do what they have to do. But you see, um, the National Youth Council also was established as a result of a United Nations resolution where Uganda is a signatory, which demanded that all countries must institute a National Youth Council, a National Women Council, as a result of the growing need and demand for inclusive representation of these special interest groups. So you can see that the, the, the background from which the National Youth Council was instituted was as a result of so many both national and international um, initiatives. So the, the point that we lost was that it was not a generic objective, it was not a generic uh, foundation on which the National Youth Council was constituted. But to answer your question directly, I think the leadership that has been there, because we are the sixth National Youth Council, there have been five and we are the sixth ever since 1993. 
and I believe there has been goodwill. What do you mean? What do you mean? We are, you are the sixth. Okay. For example, um, Joe Biden is the forty-fifth president, forty-sixth yes. president. And currently, we have the eleventh parliament. Exactly. Mm. So we are the sixth National Youth Council of mm. Uganda. Mm. There you have mean been there five so six, six terms, okay. and the terms are five years. Mm. So there has been good attempt to actually influence or impact the lives of young people. But like I said, the circumstances under which the institution operates, for example, things like limited funding, the political um, crisis that exists. There's a political crisis? Y yes, yes, there is. And In this, Uganda? Yes. And this okay. I, can, I, can, I can delve deeper, if mm. you wish. Yeah, yeah, please. Because we could choose to discuss liberal versus illiberal democracies. Mm. That democracy is not only about going for elections and electing leaders. It's about practicing what democracy actually means, okay. which is right to press, um, right to organize, mm. and um, right to have a civic, sp a, a civic space that mm. belongs to you. Yes. I think that space has, in all honesty, not been given to us, mm. to, how, uh, to, to the extent that we would have loved to enjoy Some the same space. Some people space is never given. You have to see. Yeah. yeah, but I think that um, even when you have to fight for it, what forces are you going against to achieve the fight? Mm. Okay, I think that so, needs to be... So, so from your submission so far, I disfer three points. Number one, you seem to suggest that there was no generic necessity for the National Youth Council. I will tell you that at the time National Youth Council was formed, there was a feeling that youth were disunited. I'm getting this from the objectives you shared, mm. that youth did not have one common voice, mm. and that is a necessity. Mm. There was a feeling that youth were not contributing well mm to the social economic transformation of the country as they would. Mm. And there was a feeling that youth were not represented, they had been othered by elders. That is not true. So it, are, are those not? That is not true. Yes. The first, for example, the first Northern Uganda member of parliament, Obed Mot Ufumbi, in the constituents assembly was one of the best legislators in that particular parliament. So you cannot say that the youth at that point did not have effective representation. We had good members of parliament. And if you go to look at the parliamentary cassette, you'll get to realize mm. that Obed Moto Fumbi, mm. who was representing the northern region of the country in that parliament, yes. was a very good legislator. Mm. So, yes, whereas there was, there was a vacuum, I don't think it was so entirely. Okay, so m maybe the, the second aspect. I asked for some sort of achievements of the, the NYC. From what you have said, it seems you're telling us for the past six regimes, there's, there's nothing at all. You, you, you have not mentioned anything. There's nothing the young people of Uganda or Ugandans can point to and say, yes, this is because of the National Youth Council. Is that so? Well, um, I think it's only fair that I speak on behalf of the Sixth National Youth Council. No, not really. It is, it is not you, fair you, for you. me to... I would, I, would, I would love for you to invite the Honorable Abe Lilian <laughs> to speak on behalf of our executive. It is not fair to uh, discuss um, those particular executives no, and what no, they did no, and, no, and no, did not uh, do? No, comrade, <laughs> we are discussing the institution. the institution. And you are now at the apex. And you inherit the entire institution with all its achievements and I challenges. See. So, yeah, you can't run away from that. Okay. But if there is none, feel okay. free no, to no, say no, you no, don't no, see no. any. There are, actually, there are actually a couple of them. Yes. And I think there are so many. Okay. Let me start from where I am seated right now. Yes. In the six months that we have had as the National Youth Council leadership, we have managed to go against or to resist the proposal by government to merge MDAs. There was a proposal to merge the councils. We believe that we have um, advocated and we have stood firm in the aspect of defending what, is, what rightfully belongs to the young people. I think that, from where I sit, is an achievement. Um, the, in the previous years, the, the Youth Livelihood Program did not exist. It came into existence less than five years ago. And this was out of advocacy of the previous youth council leaderships. So the achievements are there. But what needs to be done is they need to be publicized and they need to be um, known to the young people what actually the National Youth Council is doing for them. And this goes back to the how information trickles from the top to the bottom okay. and how it is dispersed and to enable everyone to appreciate what okay. is happening. Th thank you, Moses. I I'll come back to you. Let us have done this into a dialogue. I'll now go to Shamim. Shamim, you, you did say that you look at the National Youth Council as a nursery bed for leaders, a platform for mentorship. 
there are some people who argue that Uganda has no young leaders. In fact, people have said there's a leadership crisis. For example, we have only one self-declared visionary, yet the National Youth Council has been here since 1993. So which leaders are those that are being groomed through the National Youth Council? We have had six regimes. Where are the leaders that have been groomed by the National Youth Council? Many people argue that the quality of leadership in this country has been moving southwards. Is that the mentorship the National Youth Council is offering to the young people of Uganda? Thank you so much, Council. Well, I said that National Youth Council is a nursery bed for, for uh, the future leaders that we are yet to have, and we have, uh, we have some of them already in Parliament. Uh, it has not failed. Uh, we, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, Honorable Yanyaba. Uh, she's the former chairperson of the National Youth Council, and right now she's the MP. Kitubum. Uh, we have uh, uh, Honorable uh, Rugumayo Edson. He's now representing the, the Western Youth. Uh, he's now representing youth of the Western region. Uh, we have uh, Honorable um, Nyamtoro. Uh, she was the former female affairs uh, Nebi district, and she's now the current uh, national female youth MP. We have the Kabandas. There are really very many, the Chitatas, there are very many. That's why I believe that uh, indeed we National Council is necessary and, it, and I think government, government should, look, should, look into, should look into it and uh, empower it as, as much as it can. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, to you, Helen. I... You are the Secretary of Female Affairs, Ivan. That, that, that keeps <laughs> intriguing me. Yes. Part of what uh, Comrade Kidega has argued is that maybe the reason why the National Youth Council is not as effective as we would expect is because it was a top-down uh, creature. Like There was no demand from below to have the National Youth Council. Yet you proudly introduce yourself here as the Secretary of Female Affairs, Iva and the District. Yes. Do the young people of Iva and the District know that you exist? When a young girl in Iva and the District gets a challenge, are you one of those they think about? If they did, would there be uh, a solution? Is, are there any programs for, for them? Or is this just a cocoon uh, of, of, of some people <laughs> who, who are seeking, you know, for political landing, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Council. Uh, I, I would love to differ from what Chidega, Honorable Chidega said. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do not believe that just because something is top bottom doesn't mean it doesn't go, it, 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 it doesn't reverse to bottom up mm -hmm. in terms of implementation. Yes. And just because, let's say if, if the, let's say if the president came and said, um, even the district, I'll be bringing four MPs instead of, let's say, three in the constituents. And then even I won't benefit from that. He might have his own agenda of bringing the four. He might have his own reasons for bringing the four. But it's up to Ivan to decide and is like, okay, this is, whether it has been dictatorship or what, but it has come. Now what am I going to do with the four yes. members of parliament that the president has enacted onto us? Yes. So, if it was a uh, cocooning of some people saying we want a National Youth Council for political gain or something, mm. as the female affairs of Ivanda, I will have to take advantage of that for, for my own reason, for my, uh, my own gain, for the gaining of my females of Ivanda. And for your information, as a female representative of Ivanda, I do not only represent girls. It, I am just the female affairs of Ivanda district. Mm. So this takes me back to your question of do they know? The fact that they elected me, starting from the village level, I have a re female representative at the village level. I have a female representative at the sub, sub county parish, mm. and myself at the district. So this information actually flows from the village to mm. the district. Mm. So it's up to me to actually take advantage of that and know that I have a female representative at the village, and that will be my contact to the f to the youth or the girls at the village level. I have the one at the sub-county up to the uh, parish and then up to the sub-county. Mm -hmm. 
Then I have the woman member of parliament. Mm. So as the female affairs of Ivanda district, it's my duty to keep in contact with the woman member of parliament of my district. It's my duty to keep in contact with the youth councillor, female youth councillor, mm. because every district has such. Yes. So it is my duty, to, and which, as the female affairs of Ivanda, I have done. I am in close con contact with Honorable Jen Binomisha, who is my woman MP. I am in close contact with Honorable Caro, who is mm. the youth female affairs, no, the youth the, the, councillor. The council, yes. yes. So I urge this to every female affairs or mm. chairperson of finance that mm. it's up to you as the top leader of the district mm. to be in contact with who is, because as the female affairs, I might not have a lot of money or a lot of, of resources to mm. really take this deep down, mm. but I am supposed to know that is why you, you are elected to envision and have the insight of knowing that if you can't do it, who can? Mm. Go approach them and see how it can be done. Thanks. Oh, wonderful. Okay, <laughs> sounds rosy. <laughs> I'll get back to you, but uh, uh, let me first shoot to uh, Rachel. So, Rachel, you, you have heard from the colleagues. Some arguments suggest that there's work that can be done. Some arguments suggest that we are still falling short as a group. This month of August is a special month for young people uh, because on the 12th day of this month every year, under the leadership of the UN, there is celebration of the International Youth Day. And uh, Uganda is said to be, by some sources, the second youngest country on earth with majority of the people in this country, over 78 percent, below 35. Is there anything to celebrate? Should a youth leader pay attention to this International Youth Day? Uh, is, 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 is there anything we can score through this uh, International Youth Day? Thank you so much, Council. Uh, as a youth, of course, we all know that August 11th to 12th, we, be, we, have our, we always have our council as youth, where we meet the, the top leaders, we tell them what happens to us, we tell them what we want and what we expect from them. So I think as a youth, I have to say we have, because we have very many things to address as, as we celebrate. We have other things to address to these people so that they can work on them. We shall not, we can't stop at celebrating the achievements, yet there are some areas lacking. And the fact that this month, I don't see anything happening like the International Youth Day, and which we would like to have as youth, and we think it's going to affect us in one way or the other. Uh, we well know that we have NEC, NEC members who, who represent the, the National Youth Council as a whole, and us as youth, we feel we are not going to be represented because there is nothing that, anyway, you don't feel good when you have not addressed your issue as a person. And uh, probably I think in this uh, on the international days, it is good for us to celebrate and address, but one question goes to the NEC members and the country, why haven't we had, uh, why aren't we going to have these, the, the celebrations this month? Okay, I can put it to you from some sources that actually the International Youth Day is going to be celebrated at State House in Tebe, just as was last year, and that there is an organizing committee in place that's bringing together different civil society organizations, the National Youth Council, the Ministry, and they are highlighting different issues, some in line with the theme of the International Youth Day. And uh, of course, not everyone can be there, understanding that we're in a pandemic, and so you can have representatives whom you elected from the village to the national level, as, 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 as Helen espoused here. So are you saying for, for you to score or, or deal with the challenges, everyone must be there? Thank you so much. Uh, it would not be bad if the neck represented NYC. But we feel us as NYC, we need to, to address our issues. Because Kidega, you help me, well, we have one of our NEC members here who is going to, to tell us what is happening. Because you can't tell, there are very many functions that have happened during the, the pandemic. And I don't think 
the pandemic can stop us because we can go to Kololo. We have parliament. It sits every day. There are over 5,000 people. So why not us? We feel if five, 5,000, right? 500, sorry. So we feel if we go personally because we, we voted these people and we have people that we represent from the village level. These guys, may, these people may not address uh, our concerns the way we want. For us, it, for us, we want to go to Kololo and we do social distance. We talk to, to, to the president. We have our concerns. So probably, I think we, it's good to enjoy, to, to celebrate the, the, what, the International Youth Day, but we feel as youth, we need to be there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, maybe Moses, I will not speak for you. <laughs> Since you, you, you here, you may tell us. The International Youth Day, it, it has been a culture that on the eve of the International Youth Day, there's a meeting of the National Youth Council. And I, I think you are aware that in the act, this council has to happen at least once. Some of us actually argue that this council should happen four plus times, maybe on a, a quarterly basis. And, uh, you know, your council member here is saying this time around seems like there's nothing. Is that so? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Uh, let me draw some, some, some historical perspective into this. In 1999, the United Nations Council of Youth Ministers sat in Lisbon, Portugal, and resolved uh, that um, the, the youth of this, of, of this globe need to be recognized and a day needs to be set aside to celebrate and commemorate, but above all, bring stakeholders together to discuss youth affairs. This happened on the 12th of August, 1999. So the first international youth uh, day celebration happened in 2000. Mm -hmm. So that is the historical perspective yeah. that is attached to it. Okay. Now, bring it back to our context. What this means is that um, Uganda being a signatory to the United Nations, by all means has to abide to the resolution. Yes. And this was uh, resolution 54 out of 120 that were made by the United Nations in yes. that year. Yes. So um, drawing it to the national perspective here, Uganda being a signatory to the United Nations means that we must implement these resolutions. Yes. And the, the Ministry of um, yes. Gender is charged with this responsibility to bring together all youth stakeholders the National Youth Council being only one of them. There are other civil society and youth-led organizations. Yes. Actually, the National Youth Council Act mentions the National Youth Consultative Forum yes. that includes the National Youth Council Executive mm. and other civil society representatives. So this is only to enable us to appreciate that the youth uh, um, fraternity is such a broad one that cannot only be singled out and zeroed down to the National Youth Council in itself. It is quite broad and quite um, right. wide, as uh, beyond how we might perceive it um, right now. Now, it has been good practice to have the annual youth council sitting a few days prior to the International Youth Day celebrations. Yes. That has been a, a good practice because it is cost effective and uh, above other things, it brings the youth together on a day that is very fundamental. Whereas that practice has been very good and by the way, for the first time, or for a long time, both the executive and the council are speaking the same language. We are saying the same thing, mm -hmm. only that maybe in slightly different ways, but we are all saying council is a legal mandate. It is a legal obligation, mm -hmm. which is in our National Youth Council Act. Mm -hmm. We must sit annually. Yes. So the National Youth Council executive has no um, interest whatsoever in defying that, that act of our constitution. We want council to sit mm -hmm. and happen. Now, the argument should be, how can council sit amidst the pandemic? Yes. And that is why I think your, your theme for today had something to do with amidst the mm -hmm. pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think that is where the, the discussion lies, yes. that how can we fulfill the legal obligation, yes. whereas at the same time protecting the lives of our young people, mm -hmm. and at the, at the same time uh, playing by the rules of the game, yes. which in this case are the presidential directives. Yes. So, Contrary to what Rachel was saying, that the National Youth Council Executive, executive has, has no yes. goodwill. <laughs> I, I, I think that is a false <laughs> accusation. Mm. The National Youth Council is in tandem. We are speaking the same language. We want the National Youth Council sitting to take place. All we are saying is let's come together and discuss how, the possibility of it. And we have made certain steps. What do you mean by let's come which together? I, which in I council? Give me a chance to, 
to uh, explain yeah, to and do, yeah. indulge further. Mm -hmm. We have gone ahead to write to the president, mm -hmm. to write to the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. because at least as of uh, the most recent presidential address, mm -hmm. one of the directives were that you must seek um, permission yeah, yeah. or clearance mm -hmm. from the Ministry of Health before yes. you convene yes. any conference of more than 20 people. Yes. So we have done our due diligence. Mm. We have written to the Ministry of Health, mm. explaining how best we can have the National Youth Council yes. in the most scientific manner, mm. observing the SOPs, mm. and we have requested for clearance. So council is in the pipeline? We are doing what needs to be done to ensure that council takes place. Uh, so which, which periods are you looking at? When you wrote, for example, to the Ministry of Health, did you suggest any dates? Or? Of course, we would love to insist that the practice as it has been in the past, has been okay. okay. You know, where we have the council prior to the International Youth Day celebration. Mm. But you see, there are forces of nature that might come into play. And we cannot... You already sound pessimistic. <laughs> no, no. If, if, if you're pushing for council no, no, to happen... We cannot dictate the exact outcomes. Mm. Our interest lies in the argument that the practice should remain. Mm. And we are going to push for that same practice. Mm. But also, I don't want to be crucified when maybe we fall short of achieving those aspirations. Mm. It, it looks like you're looking forward to fall short. No, 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 no. But let me go to Kawabito Shamim. You, you have listened to, uh, I call them clash of ideas, about whether or not to have counsel. Uh, and I'm just here wondering, uh, someone who, who is watching will be wondering, is this counsel relevant? If it sits, uh, who is going to benefit? If it does not, are the young people of Uganda going to lose anything? Yes. Uh, thank you, Council. To me, I think the Council is very relevant amidst the pandemic. Uh, Comrade Kidega said uh, Council happening because of the presidential directive, it may not be possible, if I quoted him right. Me, yeah, I think um, we should, uh, when we look at the pandemic, we should just uh, learn. Did I say that, moderator? <laughs> yeah, like, you I were like... I didn't say that, moderator. And uh, being here, I would request that my words are not minced. <laughs> you know, my so, words are not minced. <laughs> and if I have the chance, let me repeat what I said. I said that the National Youth Council mm. executive is speaking the same language with the National Youth Council delegation. And we are saying that council has to happen it is a legal obligation that is instituted in our National Youth Council Act. Now, what we are saying is what needs to be done for this to be achieved. We are all aware, we have addressed our minds to the presidential directives. And we are saying how best can we have the National Youth Council in the most scientific manner, in a way that we don't breach the presidential directives. How? By getting the clearance from the Ministry of Health to hold a scientific council to how can we do this in the most healthy manner? How? By uh, ensuring that we have our delegates tested for COVID-19 prior to council. Mm. So my words should not be missed. Yeah. I am not saying that council should not happen. Okay. Council th th has th to happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let us only discuss the how, the okay. possibility thank of it you. happening. It's good that you are here to clarify. So you, you can go. Can you pardon your question? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> so my, my question to you was, we are already discussing whether cancer should happen and how it should happen. But the question I suppose at the back of the viewer's mind is, what is this cancer? Is it relevant? Is it useful? Is it going to discuss youth relief? Is it, is it going to discuss the teenage pregnancies? Is, it going to dis is there a history that this cancer, when it sits, young people benefit? meaning if it does not sit, young people will lose. Is, is that the position and, and, and how is this? Thank you so much, Council. To me, I think uh, Council is, is very necessary and, uh, I, and, and me, I believe that we should have it sit this year because if it fails, um, we have been in lockdown for the last 42 days. Leave these 42 days, but we had six months. Was it six months of lockdown? Mm. Yes. And uh, we, we as young people, we have had a, a number of challenges. We have had uh, teenage pregnancies. Uh, we have had uh, people have dropped out of school. People are even planning to leave university. And um, guess what? If we, if we don't sit, if we, come, if we don't come together as young people, because 
no one is going to solve these issues. We must sit together. The way, the way I handle my problems in my family or in my district, it is not the same way uh, Kidega or Helen handles, they handle their problems. So we must come together and share ideas and see how we can, we can, we can, uh, we can, we can fight. Uh, we can fight against this number of issues happening: the teenage, teenage pregnancies, the em employment uh, problem, the unemployment problems, and and other things related to 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 the young people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to you, Helen. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, the way the way the member of the national executive spoke was 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 very careful on, on one hand yeah. <laughs> he showed that he's with you council members and we have heard from your colleagues yeah. who, who who seem to demand that council should happen at any cost yeah, yeah but the executive member is saying no we, we we need to act like leaders and think through these things you cannot say at any cost yeah. M maybe if it does not work out nobody should be roasted we should understand <laughs> and, and 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 find ways to work around it yeah. what do you think there are some proposals that this council uh can, for example, happen online. Mm. Yes, there are, there, are, there, are, there are proposals that this council maybe can wait. It mm. will happen, but maybe later. What do you think? Uh, thank you, council. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, allow me insert brackets in the topic of our discussion. When you say council, in brackets, mm. youth parliament. Mm. Now, is it important that we have a youth parliament sitting? Is mm. it important that we have the national parliament sitting? Mm. If your answer is yes, ours is yes. Mm. So after that, can we all agree that it's not, uh, we are not here to fight neck against the mm. National Youth Council? They're they actually your secretaries. Yeah, okay. They're secretaries yes, to the, council, exactly, so exactly. you can actually fire. <laughs> 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 exactly. So <laughs> uh, allow me to arrest the, the, the fears of the National Executive Committee that the National Youth Council delegates are not here to, to fight mm. you. We are here to fight whoever is against council not happening. Mm. It doesn't matter whether you're the chairperson, it doesn't mm. matter whether the female affairs of Vivanda. We shall fight you if you're fighting council not happening. Mm. Why? Well, why are you starting from that note? Is there anyone? Because, no, no, no. The reason as to why we are here is mm. because there is something happening, mm. really. Mm. You can mm. sense mm. that there is something. <laughs> why are we, why did Maybe you invite us here? No, 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 no. This is not individual because, mm. like you said, mm. NEC is not against council not happening. Yes. You are NEC, right? Yes. Yes. So, for us, we are not saying individuals because we are not sure whether it's neck. You know, you might be here saying because all we know is neck. Mm. And then there are so many counterparts here, down here in National Youth Council, mm. actually playing a big part in council not happening. Mm. So that is why we are avoiding choosing to say neck or National Youth Council. We are saying yes. we, shall, we are fighting mm. whoever is not, uh, wh whoever doesn't want council to happen. Mm. But talking about the whether council is necessary in yes. the pandemic, yes. really, Council Matanda, if if you say that we can have a Zoom meeting of council, why didn't we have a Zoom meeting to elect these people in power? <laughs> yeah, mm. we were able to have council to elect them in power, but now we can't have council to discuss the issues. Yeah, that because there's a second wave. There's a Delta, no, very uh, very dangerous. Okay, if those are the strain. fears, if mm. those are the fears of Nick, mm. let us arrest them by saying mm. that before, when we had a council to elect you in power, mm. we actually didn't have a vaccine. Mm. Now we do. Mm. We well, before we elected you into power, mm. we didn't have drugs coming up, being in fact mm. uh, accepted by the National Drug Authority. Mm. So if what we want is every delegate to come in with a caboto of Covidex, we shall have that. Mm. You get my point. Mm, that back serious. then, back then we did not have all these things that we have in place. Mm. We have Covidex, we mm. have vaccines, mm. we have so many testing kits that we didn't even have back then when, when we had the council to elect. I, I can put it to you that one, uh, do you know how many members of council have been vaccinated? And it's not a vaccine that is easily accessible and it also has timelines. For example, today is third, yeah. and if council is to happen on 11, uh, there has been advice uh, from the, 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 the medical personnel that after you have been vaccinated, you have to give it some time. Yeah. Secondly, you, you also need to be careful not to mislead our viewers to think that COVID, uh, COVIDX is a cure yeah. for COVID. It's, 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 yes, it's, 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 it's just some sort of supplement. Yeah. And I also want to put it to you that we pick it from some sources that after that council that actually elected them, yeah. that many members went down with uh, COVID-19. Mm. 
And, where, and whereas he did not show up there, may he so rest in peace, yeah. there's actually a member of the council uh, that was lost to this pandemic. So this is a serious thing. Yeah, it is a think. serious thing. Yeah. But council, I, I am not, I, I have lost friends, I have lost relatives. The chairperson you're talking about is the chairperson of Vivanda. We lost mm, him. We mm. did not lose him in can after council. In yes, fact, he didn't yes. make it to council. Yes, yes. You get my point. Mm. He didn't make it to council. Mm. So I, I do not want also you to mislead people that mm. just because we are attending council, we are, we are coming out with, with corona. Yes. If all measures are taken, we won't. Mm, mm. And that is what we are saying, that we want all measures taken. Mm. But what you don't know is that the, the, the National Executive Committee also has issues with, let's say, funding. That they're, not, they're, they're covering themselves with a blanket of COVID, but with, they themselves know that they, we don't have the money or the funding to, to hold council. And one of their... The, the, uh, what I think I saw a circular or something where they were saying we need to meet the president and ask for funding and as National Youth Council we don't agree to that. Why are we begging the president for National Youth Council to sit? The president himself made a pledge of 10 billion in the 2018 council in Jinja and said this is a pledge to the National Youth Council. Mm. So why is the National Executive Committee going to beg the president for the money he promised? Mm. Let us hear them saying that we are going for the president to fulfill his pledge of the 10 billions mm. so that the council happens. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, we, we do not want the National Executive Committee to make the National so Youth Council as beggars. Mm. Yes, she yes. said the National Youth Council can, can go and, and demand for the pledge. Yes, the, instead of going to beg for the funding. Demand not beg. So meaning you're saying that it is okay for the National Youth Council Executive to go and meet the president and to demand for the the pledge yes, it is very okay we it's are taking okay. yes we are taking like you said every possibility every cost to see that the national youth council happens we want the national executive committee to take it i thought you were saying we should boycott any boycott, any, boycott any, what? Any, any any attempt to meet okay. with the it, president I, I, I hear yeah. a voice Personally. coming from yeah. rachel <laughs> it seems because comrade because moses hold it hold it yeah. I, I want to capture okay. such that you respond at a go it is okay for yes the executive to go to state house yeah. Uh, hold on, let her speak for herself. Yes. Okay. yes. So, so, so uh, it, it, it looks like there are some uncoordinated troop movements, yeah. <laughs> and I'm interested in those. So I want to hear from you, Rachel. Okay, thank you so uh, yeah, one of the avenues, the national executive, Helen has told us that maybe the challenge that the executive actually has is one of funding. Uh, I'll ask some questions about that later. But in, in, in this stead, one of the suggestions still Helen brings is that the executive could lobby uh, from, from, from the president, as, as, as many groups do in this country. Maybe you may have to also go to Guru. Now, it appears you're saying, no, they, they should actually boycott, uh, maybe as a method uh, of, of, of demanding. Is that so? Yes, Rachel? No, I'm not saying they boycott. Uh -huh. But my question, yes. um, my question goes to Honorable Kidenga. Yes. What were you planning before, yes. before all, all this? You told us, we were told, they went to State House, they were given an option of either choosing Kololo or what before. And the president said, if that time we were into lockdown, the 42 days. But our question is... Grapevine, or where do you get this information? From, from we have been... Yes, yes <laughs> And right now, our, us as NYC, we're asking, since you gave an option, we were into lockdown. Yeah. Yes, you gave an option. We can't go for uh, for cancel because of COVID. Yes. Now that the, the what it has lockdown has been lifted, why can't you go back and tell the president, since you have lifted lockdown, why can't we have cancel as NYC as the yes. NYC? Yeah, so they are telling you they support cancel, <laughs> and, and in the, for, and in the celebration of the International Youth Day, they are actually going to meet the president yes. about ten days from now. So they will demand for that. This, this youth day. Why should you represent us when we are the youth that voted for you? We okay, have to be there. I that you're, yes. you're with something. <laughs> uh, when uh, uh, Nisima Helen talked about uh, the NEC members going to State House to demand the 10 billion. No, is no, it 10 no, no, billion? No, no, no. Please, do not quote me like that. I did not say that yes. the NEC members should go to State House. No. I say they should lobby from the president. But if, if okay. lobbying means they have to go to State House, they have their own reasons. Mm. I am saying you can write to the president, inform him that, Your Excellency, we have a debt, we have a, a pledge from you of mm. 10 billions, mm. and that shouldn't wait 
up to when they go to state house on youth day. Okay, as, as you speak about this, I would like also, since, since you seem to be in agreement with Helen, to answer the fact that the 10 million, uh, billion yeah. rather, that the president pledged was not a personal pledge or a state house pledge. Yeah. It was one that should come through the ministry and the, the necessary parliamentary approval. Yeah. And that takes a process. Yeah. So I need you also to speak to that reality. Uh, me, I think uh, this is not the right time to demand for that 10 billion, that whatever money that president promised. Pe the, these people have been in those positions for the last six months now. What have they been doing? We are now in August. We are left with 10 days to celebrate the, the national, to, to have council, to celebrate the International Youth Day. Why is, it that, why is it that they want to go there, they want to go to state house now? I don't think it's right time for us. Maybe they're going for, anyway, I don't want to talk <laughs> the things, but maybe the other no, reasons. The, the civic here, how much is freedom <laughs> always? So, <laughs> freedom always, you, you, you can speak, you're, you're protected. When Helen mentioned that, I saw Comrade Kidega was here smiling. Mm -hmm. No, we are not supporting them to go to State House At now. Least not on youth day. At least not on Youth Day. And I think President Museven is aware that he promised that he promised us that money. I mean, it is also our responsibility. He has been saying that I've been writing letters. You mean for the six months you have been in office? Up to now, you 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 had forgotten that we need that ten billion to fund council. But you're also coming up now. Uh, why didn't you start earlier? No, of mm. course we expected. We knew, of course, President it promised was it was obvious, mm. and these people we, we voted them, and we knew they would represent us well. Mm. But it is now that we are left with ten days, and you're telling us that you're going to you're going to set out to get for us the ten billion. Mm. It is. Really, even if, because it's a process also, the 10 billion is a process. I don't think if money is coming through the Ministry of uh, Gender, 10 days are really, and I don't, I'm not sure, but Kidega should tell us, um, it, 10 days are enough uh, for that money, you know, the process for us to have council. He should Okay, we are, we are going to have a breather. It's getting <laughs> hot in here. Uh, but maybe I, I can hear yeah. from you, Helen. Yeah. And then Kidega, I don't know, do you want to respond to any of yeah, these issues? Or you want us to go for the no, break and no, you do some consultation? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's have Helen, uh, then Moses, you respond, and we go for a commercial break. Council, when I mentioned the 10 billion, I was just giving avenues where we can get this money, the, the, yes. the money, if, if the problem is funding. Yes. And uh, the 10 billion was just like, we have this option. But then, uh, don't we have a National Youth Council budget? Honorable Chidega, don't we? Mm. If, if we do have the National Youth Council budget, we, we can all agree that in the past six months, the, the, you're not going to tell us that, how much, how much is given every quarter? Uh, 500 million, 500 million yes. every quarter, right? Is it? Can I, can I respond to yes. this? Yes, please. Go, to this? No, uh, okay, uh, 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 let, let uh, us ask, then I'll respond yeah, at yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah, so for... <laughs> Can we agree that for the past six months, there is nothing that has been done by the National Youth Council to to take up the 500 million? Yeah, and can we have if, if if can we have at least an accountability from the from the finance secretary of, of the National Executive Committee telling us that we don't have funding because the first 500 millions that we received we did this and this and this with it okay. so uh, the only avenue we have is to beg from the president i hope this is not a mugati fight <laughs> <laughs> Com Com comrade moses yes, yes. No, it can't be a mugati fight comrade because, moses yes. finally thank you and thank we, you we go for a break thank yeah. you comrade moderator and mm. i want to thank my colleagues for pouring out their hearts it is really good to see people expressing their views in entirety mm. about the national Youth council budget i my colleagues might need to pick more interest in understanding how government operates. Now, when Parliament comes up with an annual budget, they do so in projection of what URA anticipates to collect. But we all know that time and again, URA falls short of its targets. So what that means is that the annual budget that Parliament plans for does not usually, the, the money isn't collected to finance the budget. That's why we end up borrowing money from um, international donors, mm. yeah, we find ourselves going to IMF, mm. among others. Mm. Why? Because URA fails to collect domestic taxes. Mm -hmm. So when this happens, budget cuts are bound to happen. Mm. Whereas the National Youth Council has a budget of two billion, and that is known in Parliament, mm. because of the challenges that come with collecting of this revenue, mm. not all of it is remitted. Mm. 
because of budget cuts. Mm. So it is not right to say that we receive this money in its entirety as we plan for it. And on this particular discussion, like she mentioned, I would love for the finance secretary to offer more indulgence and more in-depth detail um, because that really isn't my jurisdiction, but an overview perception about how the budget runs and how it is received. So are you saying that yeah. uh, the two billion that's expected annually to the National Youth Council, which I think is too little to start with, yes. is again never realized. Never and you realized. seem to be comfortable with this. No, we are not. That mm. is why we have considered several attempts, one of which we have written to the Ministry of Finance to request that our budget is protected. Okay. Yes. The little two billion. Yes. Okay. Is protected. Mm. There are certain um, MDAs in this country whose budgets are protected. That with or without URA collecting taxes, their budgets are never cut. Maybe they are essential. Are you? Yes, we are. Okay. But that is why uh, that that is what all of us have been saying mm. ever since that mm. we are essential. Mm. The viewers you know. may not agree, so you have to justify. No, no, no. That is why mm. we are speaking on their behalf because okay. not all not all of them can be here. Mm. But, so, anyway, back to the point, several MDAs that, okay, in your words, are essential, protect their budgets. Yes. And we are saying that Ministry of Finance, can we have our budget protected? Mm -hmm. So that the two billion comes as it is, yes. irrespective of how much URA collects mm. in a given so, uh, finance. So, so should we say that impact of non-realization hit you uh, right from the onset and there is no money? Well, um, our mandate of planning for the National Youth Council mm began in the 2021-2022 financial year. Yes. The previous financial year was planned by the previous regime. Mm. I think that is common knowledge, right? Yes. yes. So our planning has only begun in the new financial year, which began in July. Mm. Okay? Mm. So it is also not fair for you to put my back against the wall mm. to justify the planning of the mm. previous regime. information has it that many MDAs have received their first quarter of first the new financial year. Yeah. Well, I would, I would need to consult with the finance secretary. Okay. I, haven't, I haven't received that, any. That is exactly... <laughs> I haven't received That's any. exactly what I sends us... That, that's what sends us into a break. And when we come back, the consultation from the finance secretary shall have come and we shall hear from the honorables. Thank you. Be back in a moment. <laughs> the Citizens Chatroom happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV, freedom always. Yes, welcome back, our dear viewers. Before we went off, the temperatures had risen and some people needed to consult. I think they have done so. So we are going to dive back into the fire straight uh, with Moses. Before we went off, you said you needed to consult the Secretary of Finance to, to understand the budgetary allocations around this time. So I'll put two questions to you. One to say, is there funding? And if so, why is that funding not being used? for the most important thing, which is the council, that then determines the direction of everything else. Two, there have been some voices that say, if you're getting 500 million a quarter, and you want to use half or more than half of that to just organize council, should you get shocked that you actually usually end up doing nothing? Does this executive have strategies maybe to increase that budget or to work more innovatively and creatively with that money? Thank you, comrade moderator. Um, the practice in the past has been that um, the quarterly fund usually comes in the second month of the quarter. And this quarter is the July, August, September quarter. And the second month of the quarter is August. The practice has also been, or the mode has also been that usually this money comes in the second week, or uh, at most the second week of the quarter, but most times in the first week of the quarter. Today is day three of, um, of this month, so we expect that before this week elapses, if the practice is to be maintained, then we expect to receive that money um, in this week. I did attempt to call the finance secretary. His phone did not go through, maybe because of network, but I would love for him to maybe be given platform to air out or discuss or offer deeper pers perspective on this subject matter. But you've insisted on mentioning the figure 500 million. Even when earlier on I offered um, my in-depth perspective and explanations on that matter, that even when the National Youth Council budget in the national parliament is 2 billion, this money is not realized. Why? Because government projections towards collecting of revenue is not usually 100%. 
Otherwise, why, why does our government go ahead to borrow money from World Bank and IMF, it from the Russian to government? Fill the void. To so fill is the NYC void. not part exactly. of the void that is filled by those loans? But comrade, between me and you, you know that even the, the loans that we get don't exactly fill the entire void. Some void is still left. But you see, comrade, I want us to have a very broad discussion on this aspect. There is something from two perspectives. Either you're a liberal or you are a, a realist. If you're a realist, you see national interest from the perspective of the power that your country commands on the international society. When you perceive national interest from a liberal point of view, then you don't only consider the power you command on the national, sorry, on the international scene, but also the domestic set of values that bring together the people. Now, I want to quote um, George Walker Bush in his 2005 inauguration speech. He said that the interest of America right now, more than ever, is to influence democracies and peace and stability across the world because the peace and, uh, and economic growth in America is only sustained if there is the same elsewhere. Mm. Now, America, because it has such a political power strength, it can command such national interests. Mm. Uganda cannot come out to say that our interest is to see democracy mm. in USA mm. because the power we command is not the same. Well, when we're swearing in, he actually warned them that if, well, if, if we go man to man... No, but he was very careful mm. with his words. Mm. Very careful. Mm. Anyway, the point is that if you look at national interests from the point of a realist, then you're looking at the power that you command. Mm. If you're looking at it from the point of the liberals, then the common set of values shape the national interest. So what is the interest of the young people? We must unpack this discussion. And now more than ever is the time. Mm. As we are approaching the International Youth Day, mm. we should more than ever have discussions on the, on the interests and, the, and what the young people stand for in this country. Don't you think, uh, comrade, that by the structure of the National Youth Council, mm. where you have village youth councils mm. that elect the executive, and upwards you go up to the national level, was actually meant to facilitate that kind of thing. And so the, dis the, the, the delegates at the district are telling you they have collected these youth interests and they want now to come to the National Youth Council and present them. Mm. Isn't, doesn't that lead to, to the same? And I am not disputing it. Mm. I haven't said that the National Youth Council should not take place. I'm saying it should take place. Mm. It is a legal mandate. Mm. I don't want to be the... the uh, I, I, well, I have argued before that Uganda has a progressive constitution, but there is lack of spirit of constitutionalism. Mm. I don't want to be a leader who has no spirit of constitutionalism. Mm. So I respect the NYC Act, mm. and I know that the National Youth Council must sit. Mm. And the, the, the National Executive has no interest whatsoever mm. in abusing that act. Mm. All we are saying is, how can we have it in the best way possible? And we have begun to do that. Mm. We have written to the Ministry of Health mm. requesting for permission to allow so, us to sit so at the Kololo. the difference you seem to suggest is just in the, the council, you, your bosses, the council members are just being impatient. <laughs> I think that is a general social construct ha, of young people. Have you communicated to them, for example, do they have copies of these letters that we are talking about? Are the, are they... uh, do they have these copies? Yes. Um, well, that is a question that is best answered by the publicity secretary and uh, how he does his... His, his role in dispersing information. I like how you conveniently <laughs> jump out <laughs> at an appropriate time. When, because it has been the argument that NEC is not opposed to council and that NEC has taken progressive dis, uh, steps to yes. the realization of council. Mm -hmm. And one of these steps is writing to the Minister of Health, yes, yes. writing to the presidency, yes, yes. And, and, and you know all the stakeholders. Yes. And that's very vital information yes. that the council members need to know. And the question is, are the council members aware? Because mm. the council members are saying, it seems people are not interested in council. Mm. They have not got invitations up to now. Mm. And they expect not so, uh, at least two weeks right. or, or, or so to speak. Yes. Yeah, so that's where the problem is. And mm. what do you say to that? But, comrade, you have brought up a very interesting perspective. Mm. That before this council sits, there should be a two weeks notice. I just threw that right? uh, as good practice in corporate governance. Really? Yeah. Okay. But even if we are to go by that, mm. then from when the president announced an, a, 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 an eased yes. lockdown, yes. there is less than two weeks in between there mm. to invite council for a yes. sitting, yes. you see. Mm. But even so, uh, and that is if you are to urge it from your perspective, mm. 
that we must issue a two weeks notice and blah, blah. Mm. It, uh, the, the time between then and council sitting is less than two weeks. Yeah, but, but that is not to derail from the point mm. that we are insisting yes. that the good practice is, 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 is sufficient and maintained, that council has had a day or two prior to the International and Youth council Day. council members don't feel so, because it appears you have not communicated. Oh, well, the, communi the communication gap mm. might be there, and I am not um, exactly here to say we are perfect. Maybe there are some loopholes, there are some gaps that need to be worked on and filled. And to me, because communication isn't my jurisdiction, at least you know that, mm. but I will encourage my team players to communicate mm. and the person in charge of communicating mm. to ensure that these documents are circulated sufficiently okay. and uh, the information thank gets you, Moses. reached down. Now, we are moving towards the end of uh, this show, unfortunately. The three ladies all seem to be on the same page of council must happen and must happen now. <laughs> and so I, I want to hear from you. I'm curious. This is the National Youth Council. I've not had similar demands for the village youth councils. I've not had similar demands for the parish youth councils. I've not had similar demands throughout the whole structure. Yet these would be your sources of picking information that then you take to the National Youth Council which for me seems to be a characteristic of the top-down uh, disease that Comrade Kilega spoke about. But why is this so? Why is there no, why are you not fighting for village youth councils to happen? I, I look forward, for example, to the day when village youth chairpersons will invite. I've never, myself, uh, save for the elections, been invited to any village youth council meeting. Mm. So it's curious, why, why is it on at this level? Why is there no, no fire? At the lower levels, and I'll start with you, Rachel, and I would love to hear from all of you. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, for you who represents UNSA, maybe you can talk about the UNSA council. It's also another whole scandal. <laughs> the yes. UNSA, no. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, I think, as 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 the district leaders, we have failed to 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 hold those councils down due to our bosses. So if we have not received any funding from the top offices, how do you call for council? These are youths that expect, just like, expect something big from us. There is no way I will go to my village and I call for council when there is no guidance from these people. They have not briefed us. We were, actually, some of, some of the district leaders were oriented, others were not, I don't know. But these guys, the, the NYC people, are the ones supposed to be telling us giving us the what the order in which we are supposed to so if if they are failed to handle the the national council how <coughs> how do we go down to to our fellow youth and call for council and that that has forced us as leaders i'm also a student affairs mara district has forced us as leaders to go back mm. and you walk from student to student asking what is your problem i, I can tell you that if you read the national youth council act very well you'll find that the district youth council is a body corporate with the capacity to own property, to borrow, to raise funds. And the, the sources of funds that are listed there do not only come from government. They could come from donations, they could come from loans, from lobbying. Are you saying that at that level, maybe the executive should get some ideas to incite the sub-county leaders to also start demanding you at the district to organize district youth councils? Yeah, I, it's anyway, if I'm to talk, to, okay, according to my district, yes. we, f the, the district leaders who are oriented, who are briefed and what, but you, but the leaders at sub-county level didn't get that, what, orientation and the swearing. You are the secretary to the district youth council, which is made up of the leaders at the sub-county Yes. And so as you're grilling the secretaries to the national youth council, they could as well also grill you. <laughs> so, Rab, I think we have lacked uh, guidance, from from guidance from the top. Is, is that your convenient uh, excuse that I can call yeah. to Well, uh, no, well, for me, for me, no, I want to differ from what you're saying that we have failed to hold those. Uh, uh, I'm not saying so, you could tell us. No, we have not actually. 
uh, we communicate with our people. For us in Bunyangabu, we have had we uh, we had an orientation, and we've had uh, uh, simi, uh, small small meetings, of course, to engage just the youth here and there. And yes. we've been communicating with our, our neighbors. I mean, not not neighbors, but our colleagues from different districts. They've had council, and it is it is the reason why, after we have we have engaged our 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 structures down, it is the reason now we are coming to our bosses. And we, we are telling them, look here, we, need, we have issues. There are these issues that need to be addressed after collecting information from, from, par from, from, from the village, parish, and sub-county. It is not that we have failed. We have had these small, small meetings, but of course not facilitated. It's not that uh, we've been getting money and then we have these meetings, no. We, you know, as a leader, you must sacrifice. We have sacrificed the small monies we have to have this, and we, 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 we provide water for those people. We sit and, you know what? Yeah, so and you want to infect the national leadership with that spirit. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, we encourage our bosses, mm. the neck, mm. to have the same spirit. Yes. Because if we, at least for these people, I can see, I, I, I am not sure, but Kidaga should tell us that they get these small, 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 smaller retreats, the right. meetings, our allowances, we can develop the same spirit and, you know, said for, go for goodwill. The five, the, five, the five millions, we can um, have half of it and have counsel. Okay, Sit. okay, okay. Thank Helen. You. Yeah. Yes, if we cast a, a torch on Ivanda, yeah. District Youth Council, are you safe? Yes, I am very safe mm -hmm. because <laughs> <laughs> as Ivanda District, we've held our, our meetings both official and unofficial. As even the district, we are having, uh, we, we are practicing goodwill in, uh, in this youth week, mm. the, the youth day week. Mm. We, we already have our constituent MP giving us uh, trees to plant because mm. as one of the guidelines from the such that we received, at mm. least tree planting was part of it. Yes. And as even, the, actually even there was chosen to be one of the districts to do the one million trees per constituency. And we are doing that. We are on the youth day, the, the real youth day, we are having a charity organization, I, I think, program. And we shall have pads donated to girls. We shall have, we actually, let me use this platform to invite anyone that would want to donate to Iwanda mm. for, for the girls and then the, the people with disability. Good stuff, good yes, stuff. But, so, uh -huh. but? But, but that, that, and that is when we are coming out with all this vigor that, please, if a small district like Ivanda can do it, what about the National Executive Committee? Mm -hmm. Why can't you give us something? Challenge accepted. Yes. Okay, so we are coming towards the end of this show, and we'd like now to have your parting shots. What is the way forward? Where do we go from here? What do we do? Should we ask? The, the youth leaders to march to state house, as I've seen some people suggest. Should we ask them to boycott all government programs? What do we do? How do we move uh, from here to, to the next level? Uh, Shamim. Uh, thank you so much, Council. Of course, uh, from the start, our campaign has been Council must happen, and we are not, we are not stopping. Uh, I would like to encourage the youth leaders out there, the district uh, chairpersons, female affairs, and the f district finances, that less, we are not fighting NEC, NEC anyway. But um, actually, I'm also calling NEC to join us. This is a struggle for all of us, whether you're a NEC member, whether you're a finance or a district or a sub-county finance, this is a struggle for all of us. and. Um, of course, we are left with 10 days or less. I am not, uh, less 10 or more. I am not sure, but um, I am calling, I am calling, I am calling everyone. Let's fight for this. It's our right. If we are not taken as priority, I mean, I don't think we deserve to have these positions. We should leave them and uh, we dissolve the National Council. It's useless. So, me, I think, and I will still say, that council must happen. Come shine, come rain. Thank okay. you so much. Council must happen. Okay, thank you so much. As I conclude, I want to just advise the NEC members to, 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 to tell us where they belong. 
You can't tell me council must happen when you're silent. You tell us we are, I'm going to to address, I'm going to send a circular, something like that, and you don't get back to us. Where do we, we want to know where you fall as neck? If you want council to happen, are you are, are you are you with us? If we tell you, let's go for a press conference, you are our chairman, you are labor affairs, are you willing to go and ask the government we must have council? Yeah, made by significant promises when they were campaigning. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So at this time, you can't just run away and you're telling me council must happen when you don't want to, to show why you belong. If you're for us, show we want council. If you don't have money, come, we go. Whether we march to State House or to Gulu. Or to Gulu. <laughs> Show us that you're with us. We don't have money as a chairman of NYC. We, we must have counsel. Thank you. Rachel. Thank you so much. Helen, what do we do? Where do we go from here? Where forward? Yeah, uh, all I would love to tell our youth is the biggest advantage that the youth have over any other age bracket is energy. And history will remember that at the particular moment when you had too much energy to fight for what you had, to fight what, for what you want, you didn't. And uh, we are informing the neck that history will remember that the neck, the sixth neck, sat back and let the National Youth Council fight for themselves while fearing probably to upset the government, to upset the president. But uh, we are informing them that at the particular moment when you need us to, to to show up, we are showing up. We are not seated. We are saying council must happen. Now you're also saying council must happen. So show us that you actually want the council to happen. Then should the National Executive Committee headed by the Honorable Eyeru, Jacob, was supposed to send us a circular yesterday informing us of what is going on. Mm. They didn't. Now, for us, as we are thinking that actually it's not the pandemic, like the topic we are discussing now, it's not even the funding. For us, we are thinking that these people actually didn't want this thing to happen, mm -hmm. or didn't, didn't, didn't they, they assumed that we are supposed to, to follow whatever program has been happening, that everyone goes to state house and that is it. No, for us, the youth, the, we, really, we are not into that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want a different thing. So let, you, you mentioned the two weeks notice, and Honorable Chidega was saying that between the, the pandemic lift, the, the lockdown lifting, and now we don't have two weeks. What about before? Did they even send us a circular to say, just in case the pandemic or the lockdown is lifted, mm. this is what will happen? They didn't. Mm. So they shouldn't even think about uh, taking advantage of, we did not have the time. They, mm. did, they didn't prepare for this. Mm. Now that we are here, we want them to say that whatever is going to be needed to be done, let it be done. And they should remember that there are secretaries, secretaries to the National Youth, Youth Council. Mm. Let them be secretaries. Let them write what we are saying. Mm. Let them take what we are saying. Mm. They should, uh, please, <laughs> I am pissed. You're short of words. Yes. <laughs> okay, comrade, uh, you have the honor to speak last. <laughs> and, and, and so Thank you. Deal with some of these nails and conclude. Where do we go? What's next? What leadership are you offering as a man? Thank you. I guess that is uh, very humbling that I, I will speak last. You see, comrade, in 1945, the, the Second World War broke when the Soviet Union and its communist allies went up in arms with the, with the USA and its capitalistic allies. Partially because of, yes, the struggle for, uh, the, 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 the struggle to have communism um, collapse, whereas capitalism emerged. But also, there was an aspect of communication. The, 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 these two bipolar systems of uh, international power relations failed to agree on certain things and they failed to communicate. So I agree when these colleagues of mine say that communication has been lacking. And it's a very serious point of contention, which we must address as the National Youth Council Executive. And on that, I am promising here that we shall do better, we shall communicate more effectively, we shall live up to our promises. Now, what needs to be done is that um, we have already begun doing what needs to be done, you know. Like I said earlier on, the National Youth Council Executive wants this year's annual Youth Council sitting to take place. And to take place in the procedure or in the practice that has been happening, in the norm as it has been. And we have gone ahead to take steps in this regard. One, we have written to the Ministry of Health to request them 
to give us clearance to hold an, uh, to, to hold our sitting at Kololo. Yeah, I'd like to have a copy of copies of these letters yes, shared. Yes, yes, okay. sure, sure. Actually, on the same aspect, I spoke to the chairman this morning before I came, and I was asking him how far, and he said the letters were delivered, yes. He has only been caught up by a couple of meetings, but he's, he is going to share them with us today. Okay. So at least by end of today, we expect that uh, this, this information will be out, mm. and a copy of the letters we have written to the Ministry of Health and Ministry of um, Finance and the President will be availed for for their indulgence. Mm. So it is not right for them to say that the executive does not want the National Council sitting to take place. We are speaking the same language. We are all saying the National Council sitting must take place and we have taken steps to ensure that this happens. And yes, m maybe the aspect of patience comes in that maybe they should give us some more time to explore the diplomatic approach before we go up in arms. But by the way, I am one of the most um, radical and erratic <laughs> young people this country has. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you trace back to my history at Macquarie University, we used to close lecture rooms, we used to, we did all the erratic things Which that were there. Been termed. Not termed exactly, but mm -hmm. we are saying, can we give chance for diplomacy? Can we, can we discuss on a round table and try to find a solution? Before if we, we fail, then we go. plan B can, no, 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 I'm not saying we go, I'm saying plan B comes in. <laughs> <laughs> plan B. Plan B comes in, okay? <laughs> so, but it's important that before we go up in arms, we explore diplomacy. If it fails, then why not? So we are speaking the same language, only in different ways, but it's, it's the same thing. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, thank you very much. You have been a wonderful panel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Shamim. Uh, thank you, Kidega. Thank you, Helen. This is just a primer. We hope that this is going to kickstart the very many conversations in the country around this. You have heard them. Here at Civic Space, we believe in freedom always. And we believe that out of these discussions can come solutions for the very many challenges that we have as a young country. We ask you to make your comments uh, on Twitter, on Facebook. If you have not yet subscribed and clicked on that bell on YouTube, you're missing out, as you can see. So do that right away. And if you have questions, we, we capture all their handles. You can ask these questions front of those questions to us. You can also direct them to them because we have learned through this pandemic that leadership matters. Goodbye.